it is crazy out there from just the ball python market and that little niche of the greater economy to our country's economy to the world's uncertain economy inflation energy costs it is a chaotic time what's a breeder to do right now i've never been through one of these times as a ball python breeder but i've been through several of these times in my professional business career and so i have several thoughts what are you doing in this crazy economic financial time What's going on everybody? It is Adam at Proper Royals. Thank you for joining me here today. If we have not met before, this channel is all about my family's ball python business and how we got here. I share everything that I can on this channel as transparently as possible from business to breeding to social media, marketing, all of that stuff. I try and share it all right here as transparently as possible. Check out the link tree link below for links to everywhere that we're at on the web and social media. You could send me an email directly at properroyals at gmail.com and I'll put you on the monthly inventory mail mailing list. Every snake that I have in inventory that is available and it always goes out on the mailing list before it hits Morph Market. It's a crazy time out there economically, right? We all in some way have felt the pinch of inflation. Energy costs are high. Our commodities costs, the things that we have to have, the day-to-day -day expenses are through the roof. Prices on luxury items are falling. If you're like me trying to sell ball pythons, the, the, the falling prices have taken full effect right now. I'm filming this video in early November, 2022. Matter of fact, it's election day. I hope that you have voted. Who you vote for is less important me than you exercise in your right to vote. I hope that you do and I hope you make your voice heard. What we're seeing is real price wars, almost a race to the bottom feel right now in the market. Meanwhile, everything around us that we have to have is going up and it is getting very expensive. There is uncertainty in the stock market. We had a volatile summer, then October was like one of the best months and longer than I've been alive. In November, starting off on unsteady ground, who knows what's gonna happen in November. I firmly believe that times of chaos, times of uncertainty are where there are opportunities. You got to keep your head about you. You got to take almost a stoic approach. Don't get emotional. You can't don't worry, don't complain. You get worrying and complaining, don't do anything. They're very natural. I, I still worry and I still complain. It doesn't accomplish anything. Where you can make progress is figuring out how you're gonna make the most of the circumstance and finding opportunities. And that's really what I wanna talk about today. Special thanks to the team at Redline Shipping. Thanks for the support and the partnership. Redline Shipping is the only company that I ship with and because of our relationship, I can ship animals to you that you purchase from me at much more competitive rates than nearly everybody else in the industry. I want you to check them out. Use the promo code PROPER5 to save an extra five bucks on your next shipping label. I've never been through one of these times as a snake breeder, so I would love to hear from those of you all that have. People that I've talked to that have been through those times almost by definition they're the ones that stuck through to get through the times all the people that didn't make it they're they're not around anymore <laughs> to get in to get input from i do want to hear from how you successfully navigated this in the past can to you know continue the discussion in email or messages below comments whatever it might be what i have experienced are several of these occasions and a pandemic in the very volatile, challenging marketplace of the restaurant industry. I wanna make this a ball python video, I wanna make this a reptile video, but my experience is in a very challenging restaurant industry. So let me set the stage for you. And as of September, 2022, there's about 661,000 restaurants in the United States. I could tell you from my own experience and the consulting work that I do, a restaurant that clears 10 to 12 percent margins is really frankly killing it think about that that's how slim life is for a restaurant tour for every ten dollars that comes in the door they're only putting one in their pocket in a good year that's really hard when times get challenging and i've been through those and i've been through it with big companies that have succeeded and we've we've done well and i learned a lot of lessons in those and i want to apply those lessons to 
what my strategy personally anyhow and what I think your mindset should be I'm not going to talk too many specifics buy this don't buy that this jeans hot that you guys should know that's not my style I'm not the hot stock guy I am the strategy concept guy looking for the long term I also have some experiences in my own life from these prior downtimes and recessions where I took really great advantage of opportunities that were in front of me in those times and then when the good times returned they were even better they were even more profitable they were even more successful and frankly one of those times has allowed me to work here from this desk at home as a consultant and step out of my career and operations because of some of those financial decisions I made in tougher times so let's pick this apart in any tough time and specific to ball pythons now the first question I would ask myself is do I think that the ball python market the ball python industry the ball python hobby do I think it's viable is it going to exist after this tough time because if it's not going to exist after this tough time yeah then we need to we need to offload and, and get on out I yes I believe that it will and I'll tell you a couple of the quantifiable factors that lead me to believe that the first is that we're still discovering new genes. There is an evolution that is happening right now that we are a part of. New genes are still running rampant. There are people proving new genes. There are things undone with incredible new genes. There's so much more to explore. There are going to be new colors, new patterns, new snakes. This is not just a collector's world of a fixed set of options. We don't know what's going to be on the horizon. And that's what makes ball pythons so enticing. So for example, like I, I, I also, I love, I love guitars. I almost always have one right here in the office with me. There hasn't really been an innovation in guitars in very few in the past hundred years. I mean, Leo Fender and, and, and Gibson changed the game in the 50s, uh, and that was a huge evolution. That was a huge step. But other than that, really not much has changed. Ball pythons, that's different. And the guitar market is still sustainable because of that. Now, music has evolved, and there's been tons of music innovations and that sort of thing. However, focusing back on the ball pythons, there is something new that will be available tomorrow that wasn't available today, and that will create market opportunity for that new thing, and the things that, that aren't new will become more affordable and, and eventually will trickle down to the the pet prices. It'll take a long time. It might not even be in my lifetime, but that I, I do believe that will happen. So my answer is yes, I think it's viable. I think it will be here. Another quantifiable fact that I find extremely exciting and intriguing is that Brian Barczyk has 4 million followers. Why do I find that so reassuring? I find it reassuring because there's, I, I'm, and I'm talking off the top of my head, the most time, recent times that I checked these things, I think I think Barczyk's actual number is like 3.8 right now or whatever. But I think on Morph Market right now, there's something like 40,000 ball pythons available. So on the one hand, 40,000, holy cow, that is a saturated market. I remember when I first started dealing on Morph Market, there was about 18,000 ball pythons available. That is That feels like a very saturated market. 40,000 of 4 million though is, is, is 1%. That means that if every one of Brian Barczyk's followers wanted to buy something on Morph Market, whether it was a $60 snake or a $25,000 snake, only one out of every hundred of his followers would be able to make a purchase. 99 people would still be left wanting. I like those odds. I like that math. I think there is still opportunity in daylight here and I could still sell snakes for less than I can produce them for. Okay, I think this mark is viable. If that little segment intrigued you, check out the Hold Back Rack podcast with Jana and Jessica. They really dove into that topic. I stole some of their notes. They were some of my show prep today. So check it out. I'll put a link to their video right up here. It's worth checking out. Yes, I think that the ball python market is viable. I think it will exist. I think it will exist beyond this tough time. Big check mark. So then what in the world should I do? I think it'll be there. How do I get from here to there when times are good? I focus on three things professionally 
and personally when times get tough. Three broad strokes, I do a lot more than this, but, but almost everything I do fits into one of these three categories. I worry less about profit. If I could still make profit, of course I'm gonna take it, absolutely. But I worry less about profit. Now profit's different than cash flow. I still need to produce cash flow. I still need to stay afloat. I still need to be able to fund my endeavors. However, I worry less about profit. Can I just make it? Let me just make it for right now. Let's just get there to a good place. We're gonna dive into that because I think that's really important. The second thing is that I worry, uh, I worry less about profit I am more concerned with building my asset column and finding opportunities to build my asset column. So we're gonna talk about that. And the third topic is that what you lack in profit, what you may or may not be able to do with your asset column, make up for it in building your community. Everything you can do with relationships, cultivating your brand, reaching out to customers, the customer service portion, all of that this is the time to put the pedal down on that. It's so easy when, when everybody's got a pocket full of money and it's a boom time. You don't have to do that stuff then. You should, but you don't have to. Now I think you have to. That's my, that is, was, was very strong belief. I've got some thoughts on that. And again, I want to hear your thoughts on any of these. Worry less about profit. What is Adam talking about? If there's less profit out there, the fact is you can, you can fight for it all you want, but right now prices are falling so drastically. Like I'm, I'm in a point where I'm asking myself, what do I need for cash flow and what am I willing to let go to get to that cash flow part? And, and cash flow is just having as much or more coming in than you have going out. If I have a penny of cash flow, frankly, I'm kind of good because I still have a job. I still have other streams of revenue. If this were my only source of income, it would be a little more pressure. So, so from a business standpoint, it's a little harder that way. I also believe in always, no matter how good times are, keeping your fundamentals and your foundation strong. So I always keep backup cash on hand. I always have a little bit of time in the form of expenses, money set aside for expenses that I can live on and sustain myself on and sustain my animals on, uh, you know, money for rats and utility bills and stuff. We worry less about profits because if you're fighting for profits against the way that people are dropping prices right now, uh, I mean, there, there's just, there's incredible bargains out there. So worry about your cash flow. If you have profit and you're only worrying about cash flow, then you go to you go to step 2, which is to increase your asset column. What do I mean by that? To me, uh, this is my own definition. Assets are things that make you money. I don't believe in the definition that assets are everything that you own. This guitar has value but is it making me money? Well, if I'm gigging with it, yeah. If it's hanging on a wall and I'm doing nothing with it, then it's just stuff, that's just trinket. Yeah, it's an asset because it has value, but right now, could I go pay my electric bill with that? No, could I generate money that would uh, pay my electric bill? Yeah, if I was gigging with it. So in that way, it'd be an asset if it's just uh, a trinket or something. So like, like a piece of art. To me, that's not an asset unless I'm an art dealer and I'm gonna be flipping it. What I'm talking about, in our world are snakes that ideally are producing, so breeder males, breeder females, or that will be producing. By my definition I just gave, if they're not producing right now, they're not an asset yet. They will be, but they're not yet. So what's producing money, what's producing opportunity for you right here, right now? So your cash flow, you're, 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 you're breaking even, you're not costing yourself anything, so you could stay afloat. Then if you have more, if you do have profits, I, I am taking that money and I'm putting that into buying assets that I just defined. The buying opportunities are fantastic. So while everybody else is racing to the bottom for whatever they need to do and why ever they need to do it, we all got bills, we all got to keep the lights on, we all got to eat. I want to snatch up those deals and start filling the hold back rack and start looking, hopefully putting them to use right away after quarantine and all the safety measures or, or precautions are met. And I'm looking for buying opportunities. They are out there. I. I've been very, very busy behind the scenes. Like so much so I really haven't even talked about it on the channel yet. There's incredible buying opportunities out there right now. I would, I am, and I would recommend 
again, if you believe in the hobby, if you have more money coming in, uh, i.e. profit, your cash flow, you're, you're, you've taken care of that and now you're profitable, I would take those profits and I would be investing in assets that will produce you snakes. I would also invest in capital improvements, capital improvements, infrastructure, racks, uh, space, insulation, making your facility better so that it can make you more money. Those are the first two things I would be doing. The third is building your community assets. I hear people tell me, and I respect these people, these are, these are, these are successful people in the industry that have been through many of these ups and downs. I absolutely respect these people. They say, good snakes will sell themselves. Maybe for them, and, and, and kudos to them for doing it, not me, not in my world, not yet. I don't have the brand clout. I don't have the super high-end animals. And furthermore, I just believe in customer service. For anybody in any industry sitting back going, this stuff sells itself. There's some dude in a garage making a YouTube video trying to figure out how to eat your lunch. I hope you sit back. I hope you think your stuff is just gonna sell because I can't wait to get into competition with you. I mean it friendly, I mean it respectfully, and I mean it in a, in a very healthy, healthy way but I believe, I will always believe in customer service and I'll always believe in building a community and those are assets, your brand recognition, how you're perceived in the community, how people reach out to you, who turns to who, that is the brand equity that makes this whole YouTube, Instagram, social media world worthwhile. And I'm gonna work my butt off at that. So what are some example specifics? It's all the little things that you think of that you're supposed to do or that we think we're supposed to do that sometimes we're good at doing and sometimes not. You know, post every day, make your posts engaging, make them insightful, thoughtful, make them instigate conversation and feedback. I work hard at that, I do that, I'm committed to that every day. I think I provide a higher level of service in the form of email lists. If you want first dibs with no obligation, you just email me and I'll, I'll put you on the email list. Okay, that's a service, that's cool, that's what I'm bringing to the people. I spend the time with the new breeders that might not understand all the things that they need to get right on husbandry, or they might not understand why their snake's not eating so well right now, or they don't understand the difference between a rat and ASF and a mouse and frozen thought or live. I work with them all, I put in that extra work. I believe in building for the future. Let me tell you a story from my business world that has stuck with me for so many years. I started working for the PGA Tour at our flagship property, which is TPC Sawgrass, Tournament Players Club Sawgrass in Ponte Vedra, Florida. It's the home of the PGA Tour, the commissioner is there, and it's the home of the Players' Championship. We opened this iconic new clubhouse, $40 million renovation in April of 07, and by 2009, the bottom had fallen out. We had this iconic clubhouse, we had this iconic golf course and business is nothing. We were facing either laying people off, trimming things down, cutting the fat so that we could, you know, break even kind of thing. And there was a couple ways to do that. One would be cut people, cut expenses, lower the expenses, then we don't need to have as much revenue just to break even. Well, I was very, very proud of that company at the time. I don't have any affiliations with the PGA Tour anymore and I have not since 2012. But in that time, we, particularly the food and beverage hospitality department, we said, let's attract every person that we can. Let's make this amazing venue available to every person that we could. Golfers non-golfers, people that think that they can't afford TPC. We want them here. We want them to be raving fans so that when the economy comes back, they love us and they're into us and they have the money to spend with us. So how did we do that? We made TPC Sawgrass completely open to the public. No membership required, no tea time required. Come have a drink if you want. Then we said what would be the very, very best happy hour in the whole, all of Jacksonville market. And we said everything would be half price, not a few drafts, not few select liquors, everything. You wanna have Louis Trey, Louis the 13th cognac, 
half price during happy hour. I don't even know what Louis Trey goes for these days, but in those days it was several hundred dollars for a drink. Well, you could get it for half price. Maybe you're gonna try it. Maybe you're gonna split one with friends. You know, you, you, we were suddenly building experiences and stories that nobody else could offer. We kept our staff employed. We kept the tips coming in. We provided value and experience for our customers and we built raving fans both with our team of associates who had were, were building loyalty because we didn't lay them off and to these customers that had never experienced something like TPC Sawgrass before and the quality that we could deliver and we were doing it at half price for those three, four hours a day. What we also did was we started a $5 appetizer menu. Yeah, the PGA Tour went as low as five bucks for appetizers. Again, we looked at how do we focus less on profit, focus on cash flow, and how do we build our community assets? And those are the things that we did. And let me tell you, when, when the time came around to, to start uh, emerging from that great recession, <sighs> took right off. I mean, clearly the tour's in good shape. I think there's a great example to be learned there. But one other example that I will give is what to do in your personal life. Do the same thing. Stocks are at an all-time, not all-time, stocks are at an incredible bargain right now. They're, they're very inexpensive right now. Buy an index fund. If you don't know what an index fund is, go go Google it. And you don't have to have a lot of money. Fine, start with 20 bucks. Hey, I'm gonna have $20 a month that I'm gonna put in because stocks are at an incredible value. Their price is very, very low right now. Same with, with ball pythons. They're relatively very inexpensive compared to what they've been. Do we think they'll go all the way back up? I don't know about all the way will they go kind of a lot yeah I could do a whole video on supply and demand this this time is gonna weed out a lot of people so that when the prices do go up there actually isn't gonna be as many snakes in the market which is which will then drive the prices even higher so maybe they'll even go higher who knows I'm very optimistic find the opportunities to buy real estate yeah the interest rates are high but the prices are low can you make it work? Is there daylight in there? Is there buying opportunity in there? It's all around you. Keep your head about you. Keep a stoic outlook. Don't get emotional. Don't get caught up in the politics of it all. Stay focused on what opportunities that you can control are right in front of you. Protect cash flow. Break even. Don't worry about profits right now. Reinvest that money into your asset column. Build your community assets. That's what I say. What say you? I can't wait to hear from you. If you've made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. Keep it right here on the Proper Royals channel. I keep you posted on everything that we do. I cannot wait until I get to see you in the next video. Until next time, see ya.